Hello fellow translators, you are watching Freelance Translators Tip channel and today I will be your host. I'm Philip from the Translators Tech Corner YouTube channel and today we will be looking at Trados Studio 2022 and we will be giving here an overview of the tool and if you want to learn more on how to get started with it, well, for your first steps, go over to my channel to watch the videos for that. And today we will be so describing uh, what is this tool. So when you look at the user interface here, you can see there's like tons of things. And it's really uh, what's happening with Trado Studio 2022. It has changed a lot from what it was at its inception since it was the first CAD tool uh, released in the version that we know now, uh, CAD tools. And it has a lot, many, many, many functionalities. It's very big. So to understand what it is nowadays, let's look at a quick description of what it is and how it works. So first and foremost, uh, it is still a desktop translation editor. So it's a CAD tool that you install on your computer where you create local projects in which you will have your files that you want to translate and your translation memories, uh, your term bases and all that. Now, on top of that, since a few years now, uh, Trado Studio 2022 includes an app store. So it's the RWS app store. And basically what it does, it allows you to add some extensions, some add-ons inside your desktop CAD tool. So if you want uh, something to handle uh, external packages, for example, you can do that. Something to do something specific with your translation memory. Well, you will find that. Uh, if you want to connect a specific machine translation vendor, well, you can do that by uh, using the App Store. And the App Store is interesting because it's not only uh, RWS that will develop apps that will be into it, but external uh, providers can create their own app and once it is approved, well, it gets included into uh, the App Store. So these apps, some are free and some are paid uh, apps. So that's what you get. And another thing that appeared uh, quite recently uh, is cloud projects. So basically what you can do now, you can access a cloud translation editor. So you can, for example, have a file that you want to translate and do that from your web browser in the cloud. And this allows also for some continuity. So for example, if you create resources in the cloud, uh, having your project templates on the cloud, having your translation memory on the cloud, your term base on the cloud, then your project, you will be able to work on it on the cloud or on your desktop machine. So that opens that opportunity now. And so when you are buying the full freelance translation, you get access to those uh, functionalities. When you will be, for example, trying Trado Studio with the trial uh, version, you will not have access to cloud capabilities. Uh, but once you have the paid version, well, you will be able to create an account, log in and work everything there. And when you buy, so the full uh, freelance license, you also have access to uh, RWS proprietary MT. Uh, so RWS used to be SDL. So they have a proprietary machine translation that you can use and connect. And also, if you want, you can extend uh, what your CAD tool can do. It can have uh, invoicing capabilities, project management functions. You can have a PM app that you can have on your phone, for example. All those things that are available, of course, if you pay for them. Now, so that's a bit how the ecosystem works. And uh, of course, in uh, Trados Studio, now you have uh, added functionalities as well uh, with regards to how the tool uh, reacts. So things are made 
to help you translate. So you will find, for example, auto-suggest dictionaries that you can train with uh, your translation memory, a bit in the same way that MemoQ does it. Uh, you also have uh, the option to uh, use your uh, translation memory to get fragment matches so that gets a small portion of what is found in your translation memory and presents it to you as opposed to just the full um, translation unit and so those are the things that uh, you will find in uh, Trado Studio. So now let's look at the pricing strategies and the buyer options. So when you get the standard version, which I call the freelance uh, full-fledged version, you get, uh, you pay a big price and that's a once off. Okay. So, and then same as with MemoQ after 12 months, uh, if you want to upgrade and keep uh, the support going, you need to buy an SMA. So basically the first year, the first 12 months, you get support and you get updates for the 12 months. Once you're past the 12 month mark, you don't have to pay anything more, but your version of Trados will stay as it is and you lose uh, the support. Uh, but if you want to keep the support going, well, then you pay for the SMA, so support and maintenance agreement, which is basically 20% of the list price of uh, Trados. So you're looking at something between 150, 180 uh, euros. So all those prices, of course, that are offered, uh, as we will be looking at, are uh, excluding VAT. So you can also get scaled up versions, uh, like we mentioned, so uh, with extended capabilities. And you can also decide to buy scaled down versions. So for example, if you know that you won't be using the cloud uh, functionalities, you can get a version of Trados that doesn't have that. Um, and something that not many people know about is you can get the starter version, which is subscription based. So these are the prices you get uh, when you visit uh, Trados page directly. So you get the freelance, okay, that has all the basic uh, features and the cloud capabilities as well. So you get it for uh, this price, okay. So there they always have some sort of campaign. So be on the lookout for that if you want to buy uh, Trados to see when is the best moment to buy it uh, regarding uh, the price that you are looking at. Or you can decide that you want to go with a full subscription and instead of buying uh, the software, you go for a subscription and you can find it here. So like I mentioned, uh, the support and maintenance, uh, that means free upgrades to uh, the next version, okay, in level one, that's 20% of the license fee. And you get unlimited support requests, uh, which is the idea you try to, uh, to use support with that. And of course, if you have, uh, if you have more than uh, one license, well, you can go with uh, level two, which is then 25% of the license fee. So like I mentioned, there is the starter license that you can see is a lot cheaper and that works for a year. So 365 days. And basically what it does, it limits you as a translator. Uh, so you have for a, pr a project that you create yourself, you are limited to only 5,000 translation units, um, but it accepts uh, packages. So Basically, the idea of that is, uh, especially if you are going to work with translation agencies that require you to have uh, some sort of version of uh, Trado so that you can import their packages, work on them and send them back. Uh, so basically, that allows you, for example, to use another CAD tool as your main tool. And when you are working for uh, these agencies that require uh, Trados, well, then you can use that version of Trados, which is a lot cheaper. And basically it has access to uh, whatever you need to work with an agency. And what you do yourself, if you want to translate uh, from something that you create yourself within the app, that's where you get the limitations. Okay, so we mentioned that it is a perpetual license. Uh, so that's basically you buy uh, Trados and you own it. 
and it will stay the same as it is if you don't uh, buy an, an upgrade package or something to get the updates. Um, or is it? Well, I've added that there because there's been a little controversy recently on, on pros.com. So basically that thread explains that uh, Trados has stopped uh, renewing uh, the license keys for some uh, products that uh, enjoy the perpetual license in the past. So basically, if you need to reinstall uh, this version of Trados or install it on a different computer, well, your licensing system will no longer work. Uh, so basically, that's uh, the end of uh, you using that tool if you have to go through that process. So you can learn more looking at uh, that uh, thread over there. But what they say is you should have a perpetual license. So you know, uh, your mileage may vary in time. We'll see. Another thing that uh, is offered as a, a buyer option is uh, some subscription-based prices for countries with developing economies. So basically what you want to do is uh, you go onto uh, the SDL website and you fill in uh, when you want to download the trial version and uh, you put uh, the information there and you put the country where you're in and they will put you in touch uh, with a representative in that country which will uh, lay out to you the, the buying options and you can ask questions uh, when that happens. So basically you wait on, uh, on an email. And talking about emails, if you want to keep your mailbox clean, you may want to think about which email address you will give for RWS uh, Trados because they are in the habit of sending you at least one email a week and sometimes more. So you will be getting emails uh, all the time. So be prepared for that. And if you don't mind, well, just choose whichever email address you want. And if you do mind, well, uh, make sure you choose uh, an adequate email address. What they do is uh, they send you sometimes a discount via email. So I'll give you an example. And uh, so you remember the prices I've shown you and I'll show you now a screenshot of what the prices are when you get an offer via email. So here we can compare what uh, has been sent over to me, which is at the bottom as opposed to what is on the, the website. So you can see here there's like uh, something like 100 uh, euros difference or more. So that's if you wait on email. You can also decide to uh, use uh, group buys on, on pros.com or that sort of approach to get a discount as well. So regarding uh, compatibility, uh, Trados is a bit hit or miss. It depends on what you have access to. Uh, if you have access to uh, the App Store, uh, you may find an app that helps you to have a good continuity in your project, even if you are working with uh, people using a different CAD tool. So that's where uh, the App Store comes in handy as well. Uh, if you do not have access to that, well, you will be a bit limited or you will need some technical knowledge to be able to extract and sometimes uh, convert documents to be able to work on them in Trado Studio. Now, let's talk about trainings. And I think that's really where uh, SDL shines. They're really like thumbs up for them. They have trainings all over the place. Uh, and you get information everywhere. Uh, so that can be overwhelming, but at least it's there. So if you go to your welcome page, immediately, uh, if you go to the get started, you get quick start guides uh, that are quite well made. You also have uh, videos that you can watch about Trado Studio. You also get a useful tips collection which is very well made and some of them have videos as well so you can navigate that and if you are in need of some information well you can look at that and find it you also get the tell me what to do feature which is nice if you want to do something a bit uh, the same as when you are in microsoft word you can type what you'd like to do and it helps you to take you there in the more resources, uh, you can find here release notes and the help system. So the help system takes you to this page, which has a lot of uh, documentation. So that's uh, very useful. Uh, 
And you can also get the latest news, all that directly in uh, your desktop cat. And you can see the notifications here. So for example, when uh, you have uh, an update uh, that's available, you can see it, it here in your notifications and uh, you can find the useful tips also uh, from this side here. And they have a big offering of trainings that you can find directly on their website or that you can find on pros.com. Uh, so there's plenty of trainings. Since uh, SDL has a lot of features, uh, trainings are good because they help you understand uh, what you can do with them. Uh, some of this will still be a bit difficult to grasp because it's, uh, it's technical, uh, but that's the help that's there anyway. You also have a help ribbon, okay, uh, that takes you to uh, the YouTube channel, for example, the help topics, the knowledge base, the forums, and links to things that you may want to access uh, directly. And once you are in the editor, well, that's uh, the main view that uh, you get and uh, we will see more in detail on how to get started with it uh, in uh, the videos on my channel. So that's it for the overview of Trado Studio. I hope you'll find that useful and uh, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't, and also go check uh, my channel, uh, Translators Tech Corner. Thank you, Robert, for hosting me. And that's Philip signing out. Bye-bye.